Hello, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television. I'm here with my co-host, Kim Anderson. From Humanities Montana and the board of MCAT. Yeah. I want to thank you for joining us on this sort of snowy afternoon of Monday. Snow, the first snowfall. Number four. <laughs> and we were saying how the show is out for two weeks. So yeah. we're going to apologize. If you tune in and you see something that's really great, you might have missed it. <laughs> if it already happened, you're yeah. not watching Missoula live enough. Well, right. Clearly. So, and you we're not live it today. enough yeah. either, but right. <laughs> we're not that ambitious. <laughs> Every two weeks, we come on and we try to give you a showcase. There's stuff going on around town, nonprofits, educational things, and so on. And the beginning of the show, um, we give our news. And my news from the perspective of MCAT is one MCAT has a new art gallery. And it is pretty fun. I just put a show up in there and had a little opening for First Friday, um, November 1st. And I want to invite artists out there to come and look at our space and see if you think it's not appropriate for your work. And if you wouldn't like to have a First Friday opening reception here at MCAT. Um, we're at 500 North Higgins Avenue in Suite 105. Our easy entrance is on the east side right across from Missoula Textiles. And you should know about that location further in case you want to learn more about MCAT. We have our training and tour on the second Wednesday of every month. And I looked at the calendar, and it looks like it's, it's Wednesday, November the 13th at 5.30 p.m. You're welcome to come to MCAT and spend an hour, hour and a half learning how you might fit into the MCAT picture. One of the aspects of MCAT's work is to provide equipment, travel, uh, <laughs> training and channel time for anyone that would like to put a show on the program. Um, so this training, it, it shows you how to use MCAT cooperatively. We'll give you a little inventory of what equipment we have for checkout, like cameras, lighting equipment, and microphones. And then if you want to learn editing or more about a particular camera, you could stay longer. So if you, you're interested, it's at 5.30 on Wednesday, November the 13th. So that's all my news, Kim. Well, and I have to say, I, the studio space, the exhibit space yeah, that you have created is, nice. is really, really nice. It's got professional lighting, mm -hmm. um, lovely walls. It's, it's a small space, but it would be a great opportunity for emerging artists. Yeah. And you can have a reception right in our right. general Invite public area. We work um, with the Cultural Council to, yeah. to it's promote advertised. awareness of the, of right. the show. And you can make a, an advertisement for television if you were gung ho. There you, you go. Know, I make didn't sure even everyone came. So, uh, yes, yeah, so definitely look into that. Um, Humanities Montana News. Humanities Montana, I haven't said this in a while. Oh, yeah. Said, is the statewide affiliate yeah. for the National Endowment for the Humanities. And so we provide grants and programs in the humanities, which can be literature, history, philosophy, political science, jurisprudence those sorts of things. Um, and the news we have right now is we're looking for new speakers. We send speakers. Oh, for your speakers bureau? Yes. Oh, that's great. We send speakers all over the state to schools and also to community organizations, people who specialize and can give um, uh, writing workshops or Montana history presentations, Native American cultural presentations, all sorts of things. So if you have an expertise, we pay an honorarium, we pay your travel, and you can give as many presentations as you'd like. Yeah, that sounds like a wonderful opportunity for people that have an area of knowledge and enjoy talking to other people, meeting other exactly. people, exchanging information, testing out their ideas against those of the public right. and whatnot. So, uh, if you're interested in looking into the Speakers Bureau and what's required, and the, it's an online application form, the deadline is January 15th, and you can go to our website, which is Humanities Montana. One long word, Humanities Montana. Right. Dot org. And they could, of course, Google. Or they could I just like that. Right. It's so modern. Humanities right? Montana. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Sorry, I'm making sure my mic is on. Is your mic off? Yeah. No. Okay. I just had this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was talking too much. Was no, that it? <laughs> not at all. I just had this feeling like, did you turn your mic on after you, because you went to the bathroom, and I turned it off. And, and the guys in the booth would have been letting you go through that whole thing. Yeah, in easily silence. enough. Yes. <laughs> and I did have a reaction in the toilet, so. <laughs> all right. We have a guest. <laughs> I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> um. I'm very happy that Julie Robitaille is here from C.S. Porter Middle School to talk about Montana Shakespeare 
in the in the schools. We're familiar to, enough with Shakespeare in the park. So what's going on with Shakespeare in the school? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Today. Oh, you bet. It's okay. great to be here on the show. Of course, I tried to talk one of my one book one community members to coming to do this interview, but they're meeting as we speak to plan oh. this week's <laughs> exciting events. So. Okay. We've been reading the book Wednesday Wars as an entire school for the last month. And we have, it's a tradition at CS Porter. This is our 11th year. Wow. And every year for the last week, we try to have a big culminating event. And that event happens during the school day with all sorts of stuff. And then in the evening, too, to invite parents and community. Well, this year with our book Wednesday Wars, two of the themes are... Well, it takes place in the 60s. It's a seventh grader um, who's a seventh grader in the 60s, and he also gets involved with Shakespeare. He uh, is assigned to this class after school, and he and this teacher develop a relationship, and uh, he gains this amazing appreciation for Shakespeare. So when we started thinking about what could we do that's a really special event for kids that might not be something that they would typically um, see, or at least not all of our kids, we landed on Shakespeare in the schools, which we just started working with them last winter to try and make sure the dates would work for us. So we're super excited this Thursday, November 7th, mm -hmm. at 7 p.m., right at CS Porter, we will have Shakespeare in the schools, which is the same company as Shakespeare in the parks, present two gentlemen of Verona. So. They're going to spend the entire day with us. They're going to do a presentation for the whole school. And then they're going to work with small groups of students doing um, stage production clinics. So an amazing opportunity for our kids. And we're very excited to be hosting it. And we want a great number of people to come from the community. So this isn't limited to just friends and neighbors and families of CS Porter. We can host a large number of folks in our gymnasium. and. We want to do that this Thursday at 7. So it's free, and the more the merrier. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Where is it? I'm, you, <clears throat> Tim knows me. I'm so concerned. Yeah. Nap the people time. watching will be <laughs> Where scratching their heads. Like, I can't understand this because I don't know where C.S. Porter is. So Our I'm address is 2510 West Central, but it's at the corner of Reserve and Central. So we're really just one block off of South Avenue, across from Rose Hours. Rose Everybody knows where it is. Everyone knows <laughs> Everyone where who that drives is. on reserve are like, oh, I better slow down. There's the That's school. Right. So exactly. it's that school, people at home, the exactly. one you faux slow down for. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is so exciting because I think most Montanans know about Shakespeare in the parks. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, a lot of I mean, thousands and thousands of people have sat out on the lawn and, and watched uh, Shakespeare in the parks. And I had no idea they did the same sort of thing in the schools, and we could have another opportunity indoors to, to watch I a really great show. That's what they did in the, in the colder yeah. weather. And so they adapt their performance for a gymnasium. It's totally um, prepared to be gymnasium-based, and they're expecting people that to be casual, you know, mm -hmm. to just sit around on all sides, including the bleachers, and um, it's going to be very exciting. So That sounds really fun. And th the play is going to be the two gentlemen of Verona Correct. in its entirety or excerpt thereof uh, it's 75 minutes long so it's a significant performance it's I think it's adapted but it's mostly mm -hmm. in its entirety and Julie one thing you alluded to was that um, this the events that go on including that night's performance are culminating events of a of a month-long process exactly. um, and Shakespeare in the schools will be working with the kids during the day can you tell us a little more about that well they offer a variety and other schools should know this too they offer a variety of opportunities when they do come to your school as part of their package deal if you choose to invest in that is to do these smaller clinics with kids they have everything from uh, stage fighting to dramatic argument and you know just how to I think it's just the perfect opportunity for middle school kids to learn a little bit about stage presence and you know um, about audience and sure um, those type of things so we're excited that some of our kids get to work with actors uh, in that closer more intimate setting 
And it probably gives lots of different access points for kids to kind of interact with Shakespeare text. Exactly. Uh, which is, you know, sometimes you have to go different ways. To and our um, hero, our protagonist in the book, um, actually appears in Hamlet as well. So it's, it's kind of exciting for, no, not, yes, Hamlet. He gets to <laughs> do a performance, um, a community performance, and um, it's really embarrassing for him, but also very exciting for him. So for our students to picture themselves in his shoes mm -hmm. is neat. Yeah, it really is. And, and a lot of times, you know, people say that uh, the attitude towards public speaking influences a kid, and this is middle school, for a long time Crucial after time. it. So they have a fun, positive yeah. um, experience mm -hmm. with a sense of putting on a play, putting in a drama. I think yeah. it probably serves the kids really well. Because some people say, you know, they'd, they'd rather die than give, a, <laughs> than give a eulogy for a friend or something. But if yeah. they stand up in middle school, yeah, the chances are they'll get used to it. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. I want to um, repeat it, though, to make yes. sure people at home know. It is this Thursday being November 7th. Yes. It is at C.S. Porter Gymnasium, 2510 West Central, right across from Rose Hours, um, on the west side of Reserve Street. And it's free. It's free, starts at 7 o'clock, and the performance lasts 75 minutes, so. Yeah. Great. That's wonderful. Well, anything you want to add? I know we better move along. Is there a well, few people I just are hot thought to I Oh, tell us oh, about your yeah, t-shirt. I'm, I'm glad you missed um, that. So the two themes, the, the book is set in the 60s, and so we have To Be or Not To Be, One Book, One Community, C.S. Porter 2013. So we've got the tie-dye and, and the Shakespearean reference there as well. So. Um, you can buy a t-shirt for $10 while you're at the performance and have a nice memento. So That's a great way to support really the program. Like I bet the kids love that t-shirt. Yeah, and we, like all of day Thursday will be a whole day dedicated to the book and the event. So we're looking forward to an awesome day. That's great. What a great program. Come join us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Julie, thanks so much for coming over with that. Thank you. And, and feel free to come back. We want more school stuff. Anytime. Yeah, yeah. anytime you got something going, okay. let us know. All right, you guys, we'll be right back. I think we're going to show a PSA about um, Missoula County Public Schools long range planning. Some, if, we don't, oh, if he doesn't good. do it next, it we're going to do it because they're in the up. process of like a facilities I've been reading assessment about that, yeah. and they well, really want public today. input oh. and so on. <laughs> so if you don't see it, you'll see it next time. And Amy Ragsdale at Headwaters Dance Company is next. So we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Isabella. I grew up in Missoula and I went to Hellgate High School and now I'm a student at the University of Montana. I need your help. We all care a lot about education in Missoula and we have a chance to talk about what our schools really need to take us into the future. I'm a part of a series of community members asking for your help and we need to get involved in the discussion. Right now, Missoula County Public Schools is hosting community meetings to talk about changing our buildings and their surroundings to make sure they offer what students and teachers need for generations to come. We all have the chance to look at the district as a whole and make decisions that will affect every neighborhood in town. There are teams of community members working on plans for each school. We need your input about schools in your neighborhood and across town. We are talking about things like getting kids engaged in learning in new ways and learning through dis projects, discussions, internships, and community service. I went to school in buildings that were built 50 to 100 years ago, and they all need improvements. In 10 years, we will get more students than our buildings can handle. We have to plan ahead now. I hope you can take part in this important process. There is a blog set up on our district website. We are also placing community comment boxes in libraries, and you will see information coming home from your school. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your teachers, talk to your friends. Please get involved. Share your hopes, ideas, as well as concerns for the future. Join us at the next community listening session on Wednesday, November 6th, and head to our website at www.mcpsmt.org. That's www.mcpsmt.org to see background data and find out how you can get involved. Thank you. Oh, 6.30, okay, <laughs> we're back um, with Amy Ragsdale. <laughs> um, I just wanted to emphasize, we showed the people the clip, the mm -hmm. PSA from Missoula County Public Schools about long range planning. Your opportunity is this Wednesday, November the 6th, at 6.30, Broadway Inn, Inn, which is a little past, a little west of the Skinny Bridge Road, Russell, is that right? I think so. Broadway Inn, 6.30 p.m. 
to participate in Missoula County Public Schools long range planning. So anyway, Amy Rexo is here to talk about the Headwaters Dance Company annual gala concert. It's a big fundraiser, right? This is it's your big one fundraiser. of the year. It's not, I mean, it's not a fundraiser. It's just a performance. Oh, OK. It's a gala. And we do hope that we make money at it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think it's been coming, but <laughs> <coughs> I realize that word gala is confusing in that way. I don't know. My board years ago decided that this is like the big shebang, so it should be a, like gala. a gala. I call it, you like know, that. the book festival has yeah, a gala rating. Say yeah. I say gala. You say gala. Gala. <laughs> I don't know. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, this is what annual? I mean, the, the Headwaters has now been around for quite some time. It's That's a very absolutely true. established company. So now I think of it, well, you know, the way I think of it actually is that it started with Motrans at the university. Right. So that was 1993, and then it morphed into Headwaters when it left the offices mm -hmm. of the university uh, in 2004. So we're almost coming up on 10 years. I know. Wow. That's amazing. That That's one an carnation, and then another 11 in the other. Yeah. Yeah. That is a lot. I want to say the dates again. Yes. Um, I don't know if Josh will come and zoom in on the poster. I think the poster is cool. It's not really meant for television. Um, <laughs> he's gonna because of the format. Yeah. Right, is all yes. I mean. Yeah. It's not content. It's long and narrow. Right. Um, <laughs> there we go. There, yeah. I'll try to get it over the. So graphic. November 21st, 22nd, 23rd, Plus right? Plus Saturday Plus. matinee at 2 p.m. Yes. The 2 p.m. matinee on the 23rd. Yeah. The evening performances are at what time? 7.30 every night, three nights in a row. Three nights in a row. And the venue is MCT, yeah. Missoula Community Theater, formerly known as Missoula Children's Theater, on Adams Street. Um, what can you tell people about what they would see? Like, like imagine out there in TV land, someone has never gone to what we'll call a modern dance mm -hmm. performance. There's the website. They put the website up. That's nice. But what would you say? Like, they'd say, well, I don't know. Are there, are there is it risky. narrative? Are there stories? <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, they'll see seven different dances okay. over the course of about an hour and 20 minutes. There'll be an intermission. And I would say that the thing that unifies them is that they're all about relationships in one way or another. Oh, interesting. And sometimes they're funny. You know, we have a piece, um, because, you know, we do choreography from choreographers all over the country. So we have a piece from St. Louis that's called The Secret Life of Coats. And it's just fun, you know. It's about people putting on clothes in order to kind of recreate themselves. Right? Oh, I like that. And then yeah. sort of the competition between people trying to create some new image for themselves. So that one's called The Secret Life of Coats. <laughs> um, then we have one called It's Not What You Think. That is a duet that was created by two choreographers from New York. A man who was huge, you know, like 350 pounds huge and a woman who was tiny and petite, you know, five foot mm. one and petite. And so, of course, we can't quite reproduce that, <laughs> but we can have a, a, a tallish man and a smallish woman. So a lot of the humor of that one and also the sort of a dynamic of their relationship has to do with that size difference. But really, it's about who really has the power there. You know, mm. looking at them, you might think it's one thing. But as you sort of watch the relationship develop, you realize, oh, no, oh, not it's always. Not what you right. think. It's, it's not what you think. So um, then we have a beautiful, really dancey duet created by a couple of Missoulians who are actually neither of whom live here now. One is in yeah. L.A. and one is in Iceland. Oh, wow. But um, called Water Warren. And that's really about, really, that's the only one I would say that doesn't, have not what I'd exactly call a storyline, mm -hmm. right? Because most modern dance things aren't quite as um, concretely narrative as, sure. you know, Andy and Johnny went to the store and bought eggs. Oh, Scott is showing some. You might be able to tell people the title. I meant to um, uh -huh. research it. This is from the Headwaters concert. Last year. Yeah. Epic. Yeah, epic. Yeah. Yeah. We had a guest artist, Holly Rollins, who's, you I know, remember that performance, yeah. She's a remarkable aerialist who uh, has her own studio and is teaching here in town. People should take note. Wow. <laughs> I really well, like that. That looks so fun. I would be so dizzy. <laughs> it actually takes so much strength. Yeah. yeah, I bet it does. I bet it does. 
So um, tickets for the for the concert um, can be purchased ahead of time. Can yeah. Be so people can do both. They can buy them at Rock and Rudy's. They can buy them online at our website, and they can buy them at the door. Okay. Good. And that's headwatersdance.net. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, anything you want to add? I don't know if we've grilled you quite enough. <laughs> I feel like. Well, I just want to say that this is really one of the only opportunities to see professional modern dance yeah. in Montana, actually, to see right. it live. Exactly, yeah. And um, so, yeah, I hope people will turn out and at least check out what it's about if they're not already fabulous fans. Right. Yeah. They can look on your website, you know, to learn more about the discipline of modern dance. Mm -hmm. If it's something they've never uh, been to or uh, to purchase tickets, Rock and Rudy's at the door online. And the dates, once again, November 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 7.30 p.m. nightly, and then 2 p.m. Saturday matinee. Yep. Well, great. Amy, thank you. And yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. Professional dance in Montana of the highest caliber. Everyone should go check it out. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you know <laughs> it. Um, thanks for sticking with us, you guys. It might be spam a lot next. I don't know what order. We've had um, a Scott's very saying, yes, performance Kingston's show today. Out. Yeah. And talk about Spam a lot at uh, the Missoula Community Theater. So stay with us for this Missoula Live. We're back with Howard Kingston. He's here yeah. because Missoula Community Theater is putting <laughs> on Spam a Lot, and it's coming up. Our own Scott, technical uh, director back there, is also in the production. So, friends of Scott will know they ought to go. Hi, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, thanks for coming over. It's my pleasure. So, what can you tell people about the production? Uh, let's see. It is was written by Eric Idle, who is one of the original Monty Python team. Mm -hmm. um, it's as he calls it, lovingly ripped off from the 1975 um, film Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which is mostly the plot follows that movie plot. But it's also got other bits added in, and it's got a, the song, one of the songs from the life of Brian. Always look on the bright side. Oh, I like that <laughs> song. Um, it's a musical in the in the in the um, <laughs> loosest possible. <laughs> I mean, it makes fun of musicals as well as being a musical, of right. course, because it's Monty Python. Right. <laughs> Just like they made film, uh, fun of movies in their movies and fun of TV in their TV shows. And your starring role is King Arthur. King Arthur, correct. Wow, wow that's great. Yeah. There's also a few other. Uh, Montana acting luminaries oh, involved yes. in the production, Atwood aren't there, right? Oh, yes. Eve Atwood is the Lady of the Lake, and she's great. And Reed Reimers is uh, Sir Lancelot, and there's a whole host of people. I don't want to single people out because it's a really good yeah. combo cast. It's a really excellent cast. And it's coming up. I think it was this Friday. Well, it opens to the public on Friday. We have a preview on Wednesday night, which is a final dress rehearsal, and then we have a VIP thing for people with lots of money. Oh, that's great. Uh, on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What time on Friday? 7.30, I believe. Okay. No, and it is 7.30. And it's running more than that one weekend, though? Yes, is it, it two runs weekends? through the whole weekend. There's a matinee at 2 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday, and then an evening performance on Saturday and Sunday. And then it comes back, uh, we go dark for two days and comes back on on Wednesday. Oh, wow. Yeah, I see it on the screen. Here we go. Oh, right. November 8th through the 10th, the 13th through the 17th. Right. So that's uh, the, f the first weekend is the 8th through the 10th, and then the Wednesday through Sunday is the, is the second installment. Oh, I think it's yeah. going to be really it a lot of fun. It's hilarious. It really is. Yeah, and I mean, Howard, you've had, you've had a long run as, as one of Missoula's favorite actors, and, and in all the different productions that you've worked in, where, where do you think this one kind of ranks? Um, I don't usually rank them. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're all, they all have their attendant joys and evils, you know, and uh, uh, The Producers was my, probably my favorite. Yeah, that was a great production. Yeah, it was. I mean yeah. Uh, this is uh, up there, you know, but, mm -hmm. but so was Peter Pan, you know, and I was yeah. Tevye in uh, Fiddler on the Roof. That was great. I mean, they all have their own little um, problems as an actor and a singer to, to solve, and it's fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it a large cast? See, I just, I don't know. You guys mentioned a few people. I know Scott's in it. Right. <laughs> it is a fairly large cast for, yeah. for, for, an, for a community theater project. Um, I don't know exactly the number. I, I saw somewhere that there were 50. I can't believe it's wow. 50, but certainly several yeah. dozen. And um, Scott said, I said, are you going to wear armor? <laughs> and he said, no, we have sweaters that look like chain mail. <laughs> But it's really put in the sweat into that <laughs> sweater thing, apparently. It's, uh, we have our first full dress rehearsal tonight, and I'm kind of dreading it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, y you, you did go through rehearsals, and you d you're in your skivvies, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have to put on this huge, hot <laughs> armor and stuff. It's, it's, but it's, it's one of the joys of being an actor. Right. <laughs> and I think people, you know, that have seen the movie, and a lot of people have seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail by now. Right. They'll be very curious to see how that's going to go on the stage, because there were lots of special effects in the movie. Yes. Uh, super special, but people right. being chopped up, you know, until <laughs> they were very <laughs> Right, and that we do have the scene with the Black Knight, so. Excellent. No, yeah. I'm not giving any traces. <laughs> no. And Scott said there was some kind of special staff, you know, that this Tim guy. Yeah. He's got it. Like he said, it explodes or does something. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, you know, you can't do the same thing you can do in movies, obviously. Right. And they had, I mean, they, it was low budget. I mean, their movies, so their, their yeah. special effects were, were pretty low, low budget. The holy hand grenade. I don't yeah, know. yeah, no, it wasn't Put a lot of like smoke. blue screen going no. on. No, <laughs> no. Like they didn't have that back then either. <laughs> in fact, the, the, the reason they came up with the coconuts for the, for the writing was because oh, they the couldn't coconut. afford horses. <laughs> they were going to use horses. In the oh, and they click the so coconuts click the to coconut. be the hook That's thing. Right. That's right. Yeah. And the squires. Up. And yeah. it's funny. You know, it's right. hilarious. Right, right. See, I think it's going to be really funny. Oh, I do too. And I mean, it's it's one of the newer um, plays that's come yeah. to Missoula it, in it, quite some time. Yeah. So. yeah, it was 2004 when the television Yeah, won so I think a lot of people probably haven't seen it, have wanted to see it, and, but haven't been in a major city. Mm -hmm. So this right. is Right, and it should appeal to, a, you know, a whole spectrum of people, you know, not just the normal people who like musicals. As you say, there's going to be people who ha have grown up maybe watching the Monty Python uh, right. movies or at least seen some of the things. And so it's a little bit different. And age appropriate? Oh, yeah. Uh, not young kids. Yeah. But I would say teenagers. I mean, there's a little bit of, you know, there are a few naughty words in it and stuff, but it's not very, um, it's not very um, adult themed. Right. Or there it, well, it, there, there are some adult things in it. But more of an attention span. You have to, have a yeah. it has to be old enough to to well, and, just and the humor is, yeah. it, even though it's, in many cases, it's kind of potty humor, but it's, uh, yeah. I mean, not all of it, but. And broad, right? It's what do you definitely call it? Slapstick. Yeah, there's a the lot element. of slapstick in Monty Python. But yeah. it's also, a, a, a lot of people miss out on, the, on Monty Python being actually very philosophical, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's very pretty deep in places. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, obviously people like the buffoonery and the slapstick, excuse me, but uh, George Harrison, it's an interesting anecdote, actually. George Harrison sent them a letter to Monty Python saying, I think you are the, the equivalent of the Beatles. You know, you're, you're mm -hmm. taking on the mantle of the Beatles. It, it got delivered to the BBC, but whoever 
it got delivered to said this isn't real so they, n they never got it oh. <laughs> but he, he eventually ended up uh, financing a lot of their movies and stuff. oh the ah. handmade films yep. you know mm -hmm. so yep, that's that George, guy, Harrison, George Harrison yeah. 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 he was a huge fan yeah well, now, uh, people want tickets, they can call that number, 728-PLAY. Right. Yeah, or they can go online. And That's uh, right. If you go online, you pay, I think, a couple of bucks for, a, for a, you know, somebody getting their cut. For right. convenience. The convenience. The convenience That's of right. going online. We won't say the <laughs> shot. <laughs> no. And um, the, the run of the play lasts the run of our Mizzou Live, which repeats oh. over and over for two weeks till we come right. around to doing it Good. again. So that's kind of handy, isn't it? Yes, and no um, matter when you're watching, you right, can this, probably this go see the show right November now. 8th <laughs> through the 10th or 13th through the yeah. 17th. Yeah, come and go. And uh, tickets are going fairly quickly. I so bet. I bet. So I get them soon. Great. That's Howard, fun. thank you so much for coming thank over. You. you have to break a leg. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. All right, we're going to come right back. We have a few more guests, though. We've been plowing right through them. <laughs> In a respectful sort of way. It's what we do. Yep. <laughs> so we'll be right back after this. My name is Jason Vicuncio, and I'm a small business owner here in Missoula. And I have two kids that have gone through the Missoula County Public Schools. And I'm here to ask for your help. You know, we all care a lot about education in Missoula. And now we have a chance to talk about what our schools really need to take us into the future. My method is the first in a series of community members asking for your help. We all need you to get involved in the discussion. Right now, Missoula County Public Schools is hosting community meetings to talk about changing our buildings and their surroundings to make sure they offer what students and teachers need for generations to come. We all have a chance to look at the district as a whole and make decisions that will affect every neighborhood here in Missoula. There are teams of community members working on plans for each school. We need your input about schools in your neighborhood and all over Missoula. We're talking about things like how to organize our district's feeder patterns to work better for students and families. Creating flexible spaces that work for new learning needs and techniques. Using underdeveloped sites and leased properties to meet the district's needs. You know, our buildings were built between 50 and 100 years ago. They all need improvement. Added to that, we're growing. In the next 10 years, we'll have many more students than our buildings can currently handle. We have to plan ahead right now. I hope that you can take part in this very important process. Set up a blog on the district website, and we're placing community comment boxes in libraries, and you'll see information coming home from your neighborhood school. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your teachers, talk to your kids. Please get involved. Share your hopes, your ideas, and your, and your concerns for the future. Join us at the next community listening session on Wednesday, November 6th, and head to our website at www. Dot mcpsmt dot org. That's mcpsmt dot org to see all of the background data and for other ways for you to get involved. Thank you. Hey, you guys, we're back um, and we're talking with Tara Schisler from Missoula Independent and Colleen Kernan, who is a nutrition specialist. Um, they're representing Missoula Aging Services because Missoula Aging Services have made a fundraiser for Meals on Wheels. We are. Um, the Good Food Store in the Missoula Independent is uh, presenting Save in Missoula, which is a week-long celebration of all things culinary, um, November 15th through the 21st. And basically what that is is we have participating restaurants that are doing a prefix menu. Ooh. Um, and you know, trying to get their, their chef's name out there and, and what they do best. Um, and uh, those um, restaurants are Good Food Store, Plunk, Top Hat, Redbird, Flathead Lake Brewery, Pearl Cafe, Walking Mustache, Lucky Strike, Treasure State Donuts, Chow Mambo, oh. La Petite, Burn Street Bistro, Montgomery Distillery, Bagels on Broadway, Riverside Cafe, and Warden's Deli. Yeah, Warden's Last Deli. Market, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it sounds great. How does it how does it work? Um, so every restaurant um, already they have a menu already. It's a prefix menu, so it's at a set price. It's a set menu item, um, and you go in there and we have a map. It's called the Saver Map of all the restaurants that are participating. You go in there and try their delicious food and get a stamp and turn that back to the independent and hopefully get um, some really nice prizes donated to or donated from um, Good Food Store and Red Rooster. Wow, what a Interesting. Yeah. So okay, so there's a, a, a like a 
a window of time, November 15th through the 21st. So, because I was thinking progressive dinner when you were talking. So you can go anytime, Colleen, during that that week and and, and pop into any of those places and get credit for it. Or I mean, a use stamp. the prefix, right? Yep. Yeah, and it's just a way to get everyone to try you know, different restaurants in the Yeah. City. That was a great idea. I know some of them are new, like Walking Mustache just mm -hmm. opened yep. pretty Plonk recently. Plonk is pretty new. Yeah, Plonk is relatively new. Treasure State Donuts, somewhat new. <laughs> <laughs> but I was everybody's like, been there. I don't yeah. recognize that. But then I was like, oh, yeah, the donuts. So that's relatively new. Right. So they go in and ask for the item? No, there's going to be special Savor Missoula menus. Okay. So they can ask for that at each restaurant. Um, and they're also, you know, can order from their regular menu as well. It's not just the savor. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, look, these guys got the website up. There's the website. All right, that's good. Because <laughs> there is a lot going on. So, and there's even more than just this to benefit Meals on Wheels. There is. We have um, events all through that week. Um, we have foodie flicks at the Roxy. We have cool. all things salsa at the Top Hat, which is salsa music, salsa dancing, a little salsa competition. Oh, that's oh, really neat. great. Um, yeah, a good food store has many classes with the chefs that are participating in Savor Missoula. Um, so there's a lot of things, there is a lot of things going on. Wow. And it's right before the Thanksgiving when people, you know, <laughs> holiday time, people think about you know, um, holiday meals and food and whatnot. Well, and food has just become such, I mean, I am I am a food television addict myself. Oh, so. do you watch that <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. constantly. I yeah, forget I dramas. I want to watch <laughs> food. Um, so, I mean, I think this stuff is going to be really popular. And, of course, it's tied to the whole mission, which is so yep. great. To benefit Meals on Wheels, which yeah. is just fantastic. Our, would you like me to talk a little bit Please about it? Please do. Tell <laughs> us about that. So our, our program is just fantastic. The Meals on Wheels program basically serves people who are homebound or who have difficulty mm -hmm. with food preparation. And so each meal is low sodium and diabetic friendly. Our kitchen is out of the Providence, so we can meet all sorts of different dietary restrictions, whether it's a diabetic menu or if uh, people have certain food allergies or restrictions, those can most all of them can be met. And um, gosh, we served over 96,000 meals last year, wow. which is just incredible. We, yes. it's, it works out to be around 250 meals a day. And so we're reaching a great, uh, a great deal of our, our population of people who are in need. And I also cannot fail to mention that we couldn't, we just couldn't do it. We couldn't reach all of these people if it weren't for our volunteer drivers. Mm -hmm. And I know one of your staff is a driver for us. He's great. Um, <laughs> and I have about a hundred and, like between 105 and 120 volunteer drivers and we're always looking for more volunteers. If they wanna come on down to Missoula Aging Services and say, hey, I wanna be a Meals on Wheels driver, they'll get people going right through that process. That's great to know mm -hmm. because I, I've known people over the years who have volunteered and and it's it's as much um, the personal interaction that's involved on both ends as it is the delivery of a hot meal, which is very yep. important. Um, but but the fulfillment, you know, yeah. it's so fulfilling to be able to talk to someone who maybe isn't going to get a phone call or see anyone yep. else during that that's, day. That's very very true. Yeah, our drivers for. Just like you're saying, for a lot of folks, it's the only interaction that they have throughout mm -hmm. the day. And, and can serve as a kind of wellness check. A well check, right. exactly. Yeah. In, in addition to being that yeah. social outlet that, mm -hmm. that people look for. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a huge number of meals that you serve every that year. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and how is that all funded? Obviously, you're doing something new and very exciting now to raise money. Well, we're very fortunate here in Missoula because our program is uh, less than 50% of our funding comes from the federal level. So the majority of our funding is uh, from donation. Wow. The program itself is donation-based for folks who are 60 and older. And so we just ask that people contribute back to the program as their income allows. And our Missoula community, as you guys know, is just so incredibly generous. And there are in-kind donations happening all of the time. Yeah. And it is, it's a, a huge help. Missoula steps mm -hmm. up. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, if you, did we mention all the events? I know Tara mentioned Salsa Night at Top Hat Lounge on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday's culinary 20th. quiz. I'm going to kill that. At Brooks that. and Brown's. Wait. Oh, that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you watch a lot. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing that. Chester Culinary Trivia Expertise, a special trivia night, host Dave Linsmeyer. Prizes from Good Food Store and Red Rooster. So the whole roster of all the different events, where can people see it all in they one place? To, they can go to SaberMissoula.com. And we oh. have this. If, um, Scott, show we the website. We had it up. You could, you could show it again if you want. Saber Missoula. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many things going on. A list of restaurants there we go. participating. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that's large. And then uh, different things sometimes uh, simultaneously going on each night. Okay. There is, you know. a, yeah. I know we have a mixology competition at yeah. the Iron Horse. We're doing the Salsa Night at Top Hat. Um, River um, Side Cafe is doing um, Meet Your Farmer Hoedown, which will be oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. That makes to see where your that. food comes from, get Neat. to talk to them. Little Smokies will be performing, so it'll be a, it'll be a fun little hoedown. Yeah, this is really great. This took a lot of work to put together. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so great that the independence involved, that's really cool. Yeah, we have a, we love uh, Missoula Aging Services. I know, especially for Missoula, we have, it touches home to a lot yeah. of us there. Yeah, so yeah. Does. So everyone should go to the website, figure out where they want to connect yeah, with this whole week of stuff. Yeah, and uh, you can have a ball and support Missoula Aging Services and, and Meals on Wheels. Yeah. Well, thanks, you guys, for coming over. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Looking forward to it. All right. Now, I don't know who's left, you guys. Um, I don't know if Darko coming over? I don't know if Darko's left. Oh, Susan's here from Sustainable Business Council. Excellent. All right, so Let's we'll be right back her. with Susan <laughs> from the Sustainable Business Council. I know they're going to do a buy local push around the holiday time. So oh, right. Thanks for That's joining important. us. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television, and I wanted to tell you that we want to start making a new program here at MCAT called Missoula Plays Piano. We just bought this pretty nice piano. It's a Clavinova by Yamaha, and it has four piano voices on it. It also has an electric piano sound, <laughs> a different one, and it has some organs, and it also has a jazz thing. So, if you would like to play this piano, all you have to do is call us and let us know when you want to play the piano, and we'll have someone record you playing the piano for up to an hour. As an addition, we've got a green screen, so that if you want a custom background, let's say you want to be in a jazz club, or um, you don't like that so much, you want to play the organ part, and you want to be in a nice church. That should work out, I don't know. <laughs> But um, you could also use that feature of Missoula Plays Piano. Now, we're looking for people of any quality, level, skill at all, really. We're hoping you won't be shy. So a condition of coming here, playing your piano, and being able to leave with your own DVD disc with the special green screen background um, would be that you allow us to take some of the numbers and share it with the rest of the Missoula community. And you're not just um, limited to playing our piano or organ or what have you. You could also come here with a friend who plays the flute or the guitar or the cello or whatnot. So in any event, if you would like to participate in the Missoula Plays Piano program, call us at MCAT. The number is 542-6228. Or give us an email at mcat at mcat.org. We could um, record your show in the afternoon or the evening. If you want to um, bring in a child that you know or someone in the age of 18, you'd probably have to sign the program contract for, it, for them. And if you are under the age of 18, like a teenager, what have you, you can participate, but you need uh, you know, an adult guardian signature to give a release. So anyway, Missoula, there you have it, an invitation to come to MCAT, downtown Missoula, and play the piano for our show, Missoula Plays Piano. For MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for thinking about it, and thanks for passing along to someone you know who likes to play the piano. <laughs> Not that good, but <laughs> I really enjoy playing the same things over and over again. Yeah, uh, I know. Hell. <laughs> so.
I'll just reiterate to the viewing public, mm. we do have this nice piano here. I thought it would be wonderful record of a town to just invite people at any mm -hmm. level to come here in this studio and play the piano. I said, okay, I'm going to practice a piece. could bring a friend on a violin or a guitar, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to do set. it, but so. I'm going to have to practice this. Okay, but this offer, uh, Missoula, um, is is open to you. Call Wouldn't it be cool to have like a whole yeah. anthology Yeah, what if there's like piano teachers? Yeah. But yeah, like I imagine a hundred years from now, right. the people will open our time capsule and they'll see different It's like a photo album, yeah. only it's a piano Right, exactly. Album. I like that. Yeah, so okay. Well, Susan Anderson is here. So welcome, Susan. Thank you. I promise Good not to, to give away anything <laughs> about... Because there's prizes involved. Talents, right. Yeah. <laughs> but first off, you wanted to remind people about a lecture um, attendance opportunity. So tomorrow night, um, November 5th, Tuesday, November 5th, we have the last of our sustainability shots for this fall. Um, the series name is The Path to Sustainability. And tomorrow night's uh, lecture is called Greening the Bits on the Information and Communications Highway. Um, we're going to have uh, Dave Martin, who is the VP for technology and a couple other things, <laughs> over operations and technology, over at um, Blackfoot Telecommunications is going to talk to us about how you can use telecommunications communi uh, technologies to lower your energy footprint. Ah. Um, and there's a number of them out there, things like cloud computing, um, mm -hmm. and some of them have been around for a long time, like telecommuting, that sort of thing, but cloud computing is kind of new. You can not only save a tremendous amount of energy, but you can also save um, space uh, and need for equipment by moving into a cloud right. computing environment, because then you don't need to own your own storage, you know, storage capacity. capacity. Yeah. Isn't so, that so um, they're finding some fairly large cost savings to go along with some good sized energy savings out of that. And Dave's going to come chat with us about that tomorrow. Uh, 5.30 is the social, 6 o'clock is the presentation, and those are held at The Loft, which is 119 West Main. The Loft Flesh Building. Yes. yes. Above the, the downtown dance collector. And how has the whole lecture series gone? I know you talked about it when we you were kicking off right. a month ago uh, or so. We've been very excited about it. That's um, cool. The, the format of this particular series, the shot series, is that we ask our lecturers to give like 15 to 20 minutes of lecture, and then we do a good 40 minutes of Q&A with the idea that people can come in with their very specific questions. Um, we ha host an annual lecture, and we'll be back in March to talk okay. about that, but where you bring in a national speaker, and they get you all excited about things, but a lot of times you leave those sorts of lectures without having the idea of how you make that first step yourself, right. and you get so excited about something and you don't know how. So our SHOT series is designed to give you the hands-on, it's a real narrow topic, which is where the shot, it's a little shot of information, <laughs> uh, that's where the idea comes from, to kind of give you um, something to go home with then and say, yeah. you know, I could really do this and you get a chance to talk to somebody. So that's kind of the idea behind that. We look for about 30 people at each and we've had more than that at the prior two Terrific. in the series. So um, we've been pretty excited. Oh, that's great. Great. Okay, and there's more stuff going on with the Buy Local campaign. Yes. You guys never sleep. We, we, keep, we have to keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's true of all of us anymore. But, yeah, so our Buy Local Challenge, um, we, that we've, this is the second year we've done a challenge. This will be our sixth year for a holiday Buy Local campaign in general. We will the first entity to really kick off um, the concept of buying local here in Missoula mm -hmm. six years ago. And this, so this is our sixth campaign. This is our second year doing the challenge. The challenge is a, a way people can win Christmas gifts, um, either to give away or to go purchase if they'd like. We give away, um, and last year the total was $1,400. We have another week where we're still collecting gift certificates, so I don't know what the total this year is going to be. But we gave away $1,400 in gift certificates last year wow. uh, over four weeks. Um, so it was... 300 or something the first three weeks and 500 the last week. Um, and people go into an SBC member. They look for this cool poster. Um, and oh, and Scott's showing the website. Yeah, and there it is. Yep. Um, and 
in the middle of the poster, and I've blacked it out so that you guys can't see it, but there's a challenge code. You take that code off of the poster, and you can either use the QR code if you have a smartphone, or you can just go to our website, um, which is www.sustainablebusinesscouncil.org. You can also reach it by www.missoulabuyslocal.com. Oh, that's clever. Easy to remember. Um, and so when you head out to the website, there'll be a link that'll go up um, late this week, early next week. Um, I need to check on that date because I don't know the exact date. But you'll go out there, you put in the store that you were in, and you put in this challenge code, and you tell us, um, we have to have your name and email, obviously, or we can't get back to you. Right. <laughs> a couple, couple small details. And um, so, so it's basically a little six-question survey, and you get entered in this raffle, um, uh, raffle, the drawing. Um, for these gift certificates. No purchase is necessary, but you do have to go find the code in one of the SBC member wow. stores. So it so. boosts the, the economy among SB Sustainable Business Council members. Right. So that helps, and then it also, the buying locally helps the economy because those dollars reverberate more strongly. Right. 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 And depending upon the store that you go to, typically you're going to have two to four times more of your dollar will stay in the local community when you buy at a local store than when you buy at one of the box stores. Yeah, so I think um, if people keep hearing that, that it's such an remarkable. amazing it's difference you can make doing something you're already going to be doing, which is shopping. Right. right. Um, um, and they find a whole lot of side benefits. Not only does your dollar stay in the community, typically those dollars then go to support your local charities because local businesses give more per dollar mm -hmm. sales to your local charities. They're typically paying more in local taxes than the big box stores are um, per dollar of sales. And so you're supporting your local schools, you're supporting your local fire department, those sorts of things. Um, and new studies have shown some really interesting things that the more of those small businesses you have in the community, obviously you need to support them to have them be viable and stay, um, the healthier the communities are, uh, healthier the residents in the communities are, and um, the more likely they are to be civically engaged yeah. and um, doing things like voting and helping volunteering and that sort of thing. Yeah, so curious, you mm -hmm. know, all from the point of distribution. Right. You think, wow, that, you know, how would that matter? But it, apparently it does. And I think when, when people talk, as, as so many do, about what makes Missoula such an attractive community, mm -hmm. such a livable community, um, I mean, I, that's a big part of that whole right. factor, the way our downtown has grown or or a lot of our local, you know, community mm -hmm. regions. It's, it's That's like right, because now people talk of Midtown. Yeah, You know, exactly. the area around the mall is Midtown and South and Central mm -hmm. have lots of uh, service businesses and also retail. Right, or near so Northside, yeah. you know, all that. Well, so the, the Midtown, I was only going to yeah. say that um, I can't imagine this, but someday, the area of 93 that goes to Lo Lolo yeah. will be uptown Missoula. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, I've, I've heard it said in planning and design meetings. All right, I hope Lolo I don't live that long. Lolo has uptown <laughs> this I, I think that could be true. So I want to make sure I understand how this works correctly because mm -hmm. I'm in on this big okay. time. I want to be a winner. Okay. okay, so in like a week or mm -hmm. so, um, anytime I'm in a local store and I see that poster, mm -hmm. I can either point my fancy phone at it or I can write down the code right. right, and go to the website. Right. And either way, I'll have an option to then fill out a few things and right. potentially be a winner. Right. And with the fancy phone, you still need to type in the yeah. code, but it'll, it'll take, take, you me to take you to that there website. versus you have to remember the website name as well as the code right. otherwise. Right. But yeah. What fun. Yeah. It is a great idea. and. It helps raise awareness mm -hmm. of um, this factor of buying yeah. local and having that much more money stay in the economy. And besides the opportunity to win a prize, which you yeah. know I like, um, is every time I see that poster in a local business, I'm going to go, oh, wow, they're, they're part of that. That's cool. Right. And all of our members commit to work towards becoming more sustainable over time. Relocalizing is a big part of sustainability, but there's also other things that you know our members are committing to, to continue to work on. And they say, again, local relocalizing can reduce uh, more small business in the community, uh, make the community more walkable, typically, or 
mm -hmm. develops walk, walk kind of corridors, and that reduces energy use. So there's a, some direct correlation between buy local, but then also these small businesses, because it's their community, they tend to care more. So they tend yeah. to look at the environmental and social issues more as well. So again, buying local is a key cornerstone to the sustainability movement and making our community more sustainable. So over over the long haul. Great. And people want to learn more about it. There are those two websites they can go. There, to. it's actually all one website, but just two different names. Two different <laughs> roads. All converge. <laughs> they all converge in the same place. And so also, if businesses would like to join, mm -hmm. oh, the that's Sustainable right. Business Council, they can learn more about it on the website. On the website. Too. Yep. And www.sustainablebusinesscouncil.org is our homepage. Yeah. And the Missoula Buys Local .com will take you right to the um, page for the challenge. The itself. relevant page. Right. Great. Gotcha. Well, best of luck this Thank holiday you. season with that. Yeah. Thanks for coming over to tell people Thank about it. Thank you very much for having me. No, and <laughs> well, there we are, I think. Yeah. You know, pretty much we went through the show. <laughs> so we have like a teeny bit of time, but we're going to leave the people anyway. You could sing and play the piano for yeah, us. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> I could. But I think what I would do is I'll just um, echo my opening remarks at the head of the show that MCAT's. Um, training and tour has taken place Wednesday, November the 13th, 5.30 p.m. here at MCAT. And you were saying Humanities Montana is, in, is looking for speakers for the speakers. We're program. looking for speakers. If you have an expertise in a humanities topic, go to our website and find out uh, how to be a speaker on the Montana Conversation Speakers Bureau. Um, and also, if you are doing a humanities project and need uh, a little funding, we have a November 20th deadline for uh, programs uh, requests that are $5,000 or less. Mm -hmm. And we have a December 20th deadline for projects over $5,000 and also for research fellowships. So if you're, um, most of our grants go to big organizations, not yeah. big, small organizations, but oh. organizations, not right. people, no. you know. Um, so if you're, if you're a museum or a library or something like that, uh, but the December 20th deadline is also for uh, individuals who are doing research in history or literature or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. So go to our website, humanitiesmontana.org. All right, thanks, Kim. And thanks, you guys, for watching this edition of Missoula Live. We'll be back in two weeks' two time. Two weeks. Yeah, Lord willing. Right, Knock right on before wood. Thanksgiving. This will be November 18th. November 18th. And, um... Um, we'll be here on Channel 11, and you can see the show again on Missoula Live. Um, for MCAT, I'm Joel Baird with my co-host, Kim, Kim Anderson. Kim Anderson. And we'll see you next Another time. Another fun day. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hello, and welcome to MCAT. MCAT stands for Missoula Community Access Television. We are a nonprofit group that helps the community get into broadcasting and communication. How? I'm not sure. We... <laughs> It's too formal, and then people are just gonna like, oh, that's boring. And then if it's too like, oh yeah, you don't give a crap. La di da. <laughs> are you filming this? Yeah. <laughs> how we train anybody who comes through our doors how to shoot, edit, and produce videos. Whether you like to be in front of the camera or behind, we provide the equipment you need to get started. So come on down. Thank <laughs> you.